is up you guys welcome back to another one if you are new to the channel i am gold pony i do new car truck suv reviews on youtube and today we are in the brand new 2024 toyota rav4 hybrid courtesy of younger toyota in hagerstown maryland for more information on their inventory please feel free to check out the link in the description box below so today we are in this one because all-wheel drive does come standard but you still get brilliant MPGs and yes I already hit the reset button we're going to be testing out those MPGs in this video but to go along with all that you also get absolutely amazing reliability Toyota has always been known for reliability traditionally it was originally with their naturally aspirated engines now it's with their hybrid configurations you always read about cars like the Highlander hybrid I read about an article going over a million miles the other day so excellent reliability on these things so ultimately in this video we will be testing out and going over everything about this one from Excel acceleration of braking, steering feel, ride quality, sound system, exhaust clip, all that fun stuff. So having said all of that, what do you guys say? Let's just go ahead and jump right into it. And as always, let's start with pricing. And so as you can imagine, there are so many different trim levels for the 2024 RAV4 Hybrid. First one being the LE starting at $31,475, XLE for $32,985, XLE Premium for $35,875, Woodland Edition, which actually is the one we are in today, starting at $34,695, SE for $34,170, XSE for $37,135, and then the Limited starting at $39,780. So, like I said, so many different trim levels for this one, but regardless of trim level that you go with, the power plant on the RAV4 Hybrid is going to be the same. Powering the Beast is a 2.5 liter naturally aspirated inline four cylinder with two electric motors, putting out a combined 219 horsepower, 163 pound-feet of torque power being sent to all four wheels through a continuously variable transmission zero to 60 time coming in at approximately 7.3 seconds which is actually not that bad because when you compare this hybrid configuration to the non-hybrid rav4 the non-hybrid rav4 actually comes in at eight seconds flat so the hybrid version here is actually substantially quicker than the non-hybrid believe it or not top speed 115 miles per hour with mpg numbers coming in at get ready 41 in the city, 38 on the highway for an all-wheel drive SUV. You gotta love that, but taking regular unleaded fuel. So now before we do any kind of fun acceleration test here in the RAV4, I did want to mention to you guys the drive modes. There's actually a circular dial and some buttons just to the left of the shifter that gives you eco, normal, sport, EV, and actually a trail mode as well. Adjusting things like the shift points, the throttle responses, steering sensitivity, and the all-wheel drive system engagement then as well. So now have I got all of that out of the way, what do you guys say? Let's go ahead and find it straight away. Let's put the acceleration here to the test in sport mode and let's see how quickly we can get our new 2024 RAV4 hybrid here up to speed. All right, we are in sport driving mode in three, two, one, go. Wow, that was quick. That was a very quick reaction there. Dang, man, there is nothing wrong with that. The thing I love about Toyota hybrids is it is just instant acceleration right when you hit the gas pedal because of those two electric motors. There's no sort of delay that you get with traditionally natural naturally aspirated engines and certainly no delay like a turbocharged engine so you almost get that electric car feeling when you first hit the gas not quite like that but it's still a heck of an acceleration you're 100 percent not going to have any issues in merging onto the highway that was that was actually kind of fun but anyways to go along with that acceleration as always braking is equally important so up front you will find 12 inch ventilated front discs in the back 11.1 inch solid rear disc as far as that 60 zero stopping distance goes that comes in at 133 feet which is kind of below average it's not the very best number but let's go ahead and hit the brakes real quick ah, it's it's not bad it's not it's okay it's an okay braking feel it's probably what i expected the rav4 to feel like so I personally don't have any issues with that, but again, that 60 and 133 feet, typically you want that to be in the 120s, um, but it's definitely on the higher side of things. I've seen as bad as 139, but 133 is definitely on the higher side of things. But then touching on suspension and handling, up front you're gonna get a McPherson strut front suspension, in the back independent multi-link rear suspension, front and rear stabilizer bars. Then if you were to go with the SE trims though, you're also gonna get a sport tune suspension for a little better handling there if you wanted it. But overall, as far as ride quality, goes that has actually been perfectly fine in my short little test drive here today even with our all-terrain tires which i'll show you guys a little bit more when we get to the exterior portion of this review but still ride quality has been perfectly fine so i haven't had any issues there as far as steering feel goes it actually tends to lean a little bit on the heavier side of things which i like the steering feel actually feels pretty darn nice so 
I love that. As far as cabin noise goes, we're going, uh, what are we going, 52 miles per hour right now, since so this is the perfect test. I don't think there is a heck of a lot of road noise or wind noise coming into the cabin, so I personally don't have any issues there either. Then touching our rear visibility, I could see perfectly fine out the back. I'm laughing because the shape of the RAV4 it just lends itself to perfect visibility because it's more boxy shape. So rear visibility is 100% on point. I did want to also mention rain sensing windshield wipers are going to be optional for the RAV4 hybrid, but doesn't come standard on any particular trim level. But anyways, that about rounds out the performance segment of this review, you guys. Let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of our brand new 2024 Toyota RAV4 Hybrid. I'm also gonna be telling you guys how many miles per gallon I got in this thing at the very beginning part of this exterior portion of this review as well. All right, so here she is, you guys, on this super windy day, the new 2024 Toyota RAV4 Hybrid finished in midnight black metallic. In case you were curious of our exact exterior color name but speaking of colors there is a new color for the 2024 model year that is going to be an army green color and that is only available on the woodland edition trim that we have with us here today so envision this in an army green as well i do think it looks good in black but anyways as always let's go ahead and start with where the RAV4 hybrid is made taking a look at the vin first character is the number two indicating that the hybrid is built and assembled in Canada, eh? Anyways, let's go ahead and start up front on this one. Matte black front grille will come standard with active grille shutters, meaning that the grille shutters are gonna open and close depending upon the engine cooling that is needed at any given time. Blue Toyota badging, since it's a hybrid, that's what Toyota does with their hybrids, of course. Full LED headlights, though, coming standard for all trim levels, meaning both low beam and high beam. I love that. You do get LED daytime running lights as well. You get the automatic feature. You also get automatic high beams. So if you have your high beams on, on at night and it senses the vehicle coming in the opposite direction it's going to automatically dim them back to low beams and when that vehicle is gone it's going to automatically bounce it back up to high beams for you there so gotta love that and of course just below the headlights you're going to find led fog lights for the xle premium the woodland edition and the limited those three term levels in particular but anyways definitely looks good up front here let's now go ahead and make our way to the side all right so but now since you are around to the side of the RAV4 hybrid all the way to the top roof rails do come standard crossbars are going to come standard on the woodland edition trim level only so we do have those as well I like that rear privacy glass coming standard across the board as well gotta love that chrome upper window trim that looks pretty darn good too black power adjustable side mirrors will come standard on the LE but then body colored side mirrors for the XLE trim level and up with integrated turn signals as well for the XLE trim level and up and then gloss black side mirrors for any particular exterior color that you go with for the woodland edition trim level so although it looks like they're body colored because we had the black exterior if we would have went with the army green exterior they still would have been gloss black that's all i'm saying but then take a look down at the wheel setup 17 inch alloys for the le and xle trims 18 inch alloys for the xle premium se xsc and limited trims and then the woodland trim that we have today is going to get a special wheel setup 18 inch bronze alloys and i love when toyota does this they did this with a particular trim in the camry as well the bronze wheels always looks so dang good that is a jdm thing and i definitely love it but anyways that pretty much rounds out the side profile let's now go ahead and make our way to the back all right so now since we are around to the back of this one all the way to the top body colored shark fin antenna just below that rear spoiler with an integrated brake light just below that rear window wiper you do have some super bright led tail lights that do come standard for all trims as well once again the blue badging but you gotta love the gloss black badging as well you almost can't even see it but you do have some hybrid and RAV4 badging back there. It's going to be finished in gloss black if you go with the woodland. You got to love that woodland mountain on the back of the tailgate there as well. But then just below it all, you will actually find dual exhaust out. This is going to be finished in a gloss black finish actually with the woodland. So that looks pretty darn cool as well. Otherwise, it's going to be chrome. But anyways, having said that, I do believe you guys know what we have to do next here. As always, here is that exhaust clip. All right, so now since we are around to the back of the RAV4, when it comes to opening that rear tailgate, it is gonna be a power tailgate for the XLE Premium 
XSC and limited trim levels, those three specifically. But once opened up, cargo capacity comes in at 37.5 cubic feet. If that was not enough space, there is a 60-40 split, meaning of course the rear seats do fold down. Bumping that up to 69.8 cubic feet, that's a big jump there. There's a cargo cover back there. You do have a cargo net. You do have some LED cargo lighting as opposed to the halogen. So I liked that. You do have some tie down anchors back there. There is a 12 volt power outlet, but there's also a 120 volt power outlet I found back there. So that was pretty cool. Then if you were to lift up underneath of that cargo floor, you are going to find a spare tire as opposed to the fix the flat, which you guys know I love. But then make our way up to the rear legroom that comes in at 37.8 inches. For reference, I'm an even six feet tall. This is how much space I had in the rear seats there. Rear center armrest with cup holders does come standard. Rear ventilation actually comes standard on all trim levels across the board. Dual rear USB charging ports for the XLE trim level end up. And then if you wanted heated rear seats, they are going to be optional on the limited trim level only. So that's how you're gonna go ahead and get those. But then make our way up to the front seats, manually adjustable cloth seating for the LE, power adjustable driver seat for the XLE trim level and up. You're gonna find a soft text upholstery for the XLE premium trim level and up. Heated front seats for the XSE trim level and up, and then ventilated front seats on the limited trim level only. So overall, as far as seat comfort goes, it was actually really, really good. Reason being is because the power adjustable lumbar support it was extremely power adjustable, probably the most adjustable lumbar support that I have seen in quite a while. It was absolutely incredible. But anyways, then making our way to the steering wheel, it is tilt and telescoping, manually adjustable, leather wrapped for the SE trim level and up, and then heated steering wheel is going to be optional. But then making our way to the startup, let me start by showing you guys the key. It is a pretty basic key. You got your Toyota RAV4 badging on the one side. When you flip it over, lock and unlock, that's it. But it is all keyless entry with a push button start for the XLE premium trim level and up. So all I'm going to do here is simply put my foot on the brake and press that engine start button located just by the driver's right knee. And so but then once started up, you're gonna find a seven inch digital screen on all trim levels, but the limited. Limited is gonna give you a full 12.3 inch digital gauge cluster. But having said that, I didn't mind the gauges that we had with us here today. One of the cool things about the gauges is when you change the drive mode, if I were to put it in sport, it's gonna light everything up in red. If I were to put it in eco, it lights everything up in green. Uh, normal driving mode lights everything up in gray. Uh, trail driving mode actually lights everything up in kind of like a violet indigo kind of color which is a uh, interesting choice. I probably would have done brown, but it's okay. That works. And of course, since everything's digital in the middle, you got everything you possibly want. Things like outside temperature, how many miles you have left until you hit empty your average MPGs at any given time. I could go on and on. It's basically everything that you need there. Then making our way to overall interior quality and power moonroof is going to come on the XLE premium limited and XSE trims. LED interior lighting coming standard. Overhead sunglass holder coming standard for all trims as well. Wireless phone charger is going to be optional. Blue ambient lighting is going to come on the limited and yes it is just one color but overall as far as interior quality goes i do like the little bit of storage just in front of the shifter here you got a usb charging port 12 volt power outlet behind the shifter you have some very deep cup holders so you can hold taller drinks a little bit better now but then the center armrest here it's an okay amount of storage you got a couple usb charging ports in there too one of the cool things about the rav4 though is just above the passenger side glove box you do have a little bit of storage there although it is finished in plastic i would have loved to have seen them finish that and a rubberized storage there so things don't slide around as much but it's still there nonetheless we also have an option with us here today it's a frameless rear view mirror with home link controls to up to three different garage doors i like that as well i think it's like a 175 dollar option if i remember correctly so it's not all that much but overall as far as interior quality goes it'll certainly get the job done. But so now let's go ahead and make our way to the infotainment screen here. Eight inch color touchscreen display is gonna come on all trim levels, but the XSE and the limited. XSE and limited are gonna give you a 10.5 inch color touchscreen display. Either way though, you still get Bluetooth and audio streaming. You still get wireless Android Auto, Apple CarPlay. So no pesky wires anymore. You gotta love that. You can check out your driving statistics up there if you wanted to. And of course your radio information. And so when it comes to the sound systems, there are two of them. You're gonna find six speakers for all trim levels, but the limited. Limited is gonna give you an 11 speaker JBL sound system, which is gonna be optional by the way on the other trims. An option that we don't have with us here today. So having said that, we do have the six speaker sound system with us here. So what do you guys say? Let's go ahead and turn on the radio, see what we got playing this morning, and let's test out the clarity of this one. Hey 
actually wasn't that bad. Not a bad six speaker sound system, if I'm being honest. Like I've heard a lot worse spe six speaker sound systems than that. So that'll certainly get the job done. Obviously, if you like music, go with the limited because you're gonna get an 11 speaker JBL sound system with the subwoofer, but this was pretty darn good for what it is. But anyways, last thing I wanna mention you guys on the infotainment screen at least, is when you do put the RAV4 in reverse, you will find a rear view camera coming standard across the board. Pretty high definition as well, and it's gonna make that little chiming noise since we got a hybrid here. We're in EV mode, of course, letting people know that you're backing up so you don't run over them, which is always is going to lead us into safety. And so to start, IHS top safety pick, which is a heck of a start right there. Front side side curtain airbags do come standard. Driver's knee airbag up front as well. Also, front passenger seat cushion airbag. You don't always find that. In the back, you're gonna have latch, AKA lower anchors to tethers for children for the rear car seats, rear child door locks, tire pressure monitoring system, but also coming standard Toyota Safety Sense 2.5. That gives you a pre-collision system with pedestrian detection, dynamic radar cruise control, lane departure alert with steering assist, lane trace assist, and road sign assist then as well so overall when it comes to my final thoughts of the rav4 hybrid it's quicker than a traditional rav4 you can definitely tell that when you initially hit the gas it instantly launches you so you gotta love that it's also extremely fuel efficient when you take into account this is an all-wheel drive suv that i got 41 miles per gallon in even through the mountains i drove up a mountain and then i drove back down the mountain of course but still 41 miles per gallon that is incredible and it's got the reliability that toyota is known for especially their hybrid configurations are insanely reliable so you gotta love that as well and i didn't mention it yet but you do also get two years or 25,000 miles of complimentary maintenance as well so that's going to save you a little bit of money there so overall I think this is the solid choice, honestly. An all-wheel drive SUV with 41 miles per gallon, this thing is gonna save you so much money. So an incredible value in my personal opinion. Let me know what you guys think of the RAV4 Hybrid in the comment section below. That is about it for this one, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen if you want to see what's coming next on the channel. Before it gets to YouTube, be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're into new car reviews, because that is what we do here on this channel after all. Do appreciate you guys watching more than you know, and I will see you guys all in the next video. Stay gold.